everybody! Welcome back! Today we're going to be talking about King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. This is the first book in the Nikolai duology, and it is the sixth book in the Grisha verse. Uh, when I read this, <laughs> I did not realize that this was the first of a duology, and I thought it was a standalone book. And was very confused when I got to the end and nothing had been resolved. <laughs> so it is important to realize if you're going to read this book that this is the first of a duology. And honestly, given the amount of setup and the intensity of the situation, I would not at all be surprised to find out that this ends up being a trilogy. But right now they're saying it's going to be a duology. So there you have it. Now, this book focuses on Nikolai... It's, it's kind of a dual perspective. So you've got half of the book happening in Ravka following Nikolai. And then the other half is about Nina, who's in deep undercover in Fjorda or Fjorda or however you pronounce it. And their timelines have nothing to do with each other other than like they're both trying to save Ravka. Ravka. But... Um, I thought that was interesting because it was like, why not just give Nina her own book? But maybe in the second part, it's gonna, they'll converge. I also thought it was interesting that this is the Nikolai duology, but at least half the book is about Nina. <laughs> so yeah, I, some interesting choices made here. I enjoy Nina and Nikolai, so I was like not upset about it. I just thought it was kind of interesting to be like, oh, this is a book about Nikolai. 50% of it will be about Nina. <laughs> so, um, and it's not even like Nina is like trying to do something to support Nikolai in his situation. She's like off on her own mission. So anyway, let's get into the breakdown for this guy, shall we? Now for pacing, this is a fairly densely written book, which is kind of interesting because there's like almost no character development because these are all characters you've seen before and there is very little world building because this is a world that you've been in for five books now so how is it densely written well <laughs> the situation itself is really complicated so there's a lot of description of like the politics that are kind of binding them into these weird corners and about yeah so like nina is in deep undercover and there's a lot of talk of like her mission there and like what she's trying to do and nikolai is kind of backed into a corner with some politics that have to do around like their the country is broke and they owe kirch a bunch of money and now like fjorda is trying to start a war and so there's a lot of politicking basically and that makes it densely written and i enjoy that because it's still like intrigue and you know there's espionage if you will and i find that stuff really interesting so for me i found it very compelling and engrossing even though it was kind of on the denser side the plot is slowly unveiled because you're just getting like snippets of what's going on while the characters are kind of plotting and you're like well what exactly are they trying to do but they're not gonna they're like i have a plan and you don't actually know what the plan is until it unfolds and you're like oh snap <laughs> so it's kind of slow to unveil to be unveiled so again it's a slow it's a more densely written book with a kind of i don't want to say slow pace because it's not slow but it's oh, you use the word slow a lot No. it's more of a measured pace but they do that because it keeps you guessing about what's actually going on there are several points of views points of points of view points of view um there's two halves to the book one half follows nina and her crew on their undercover mission and the other follows nikolai and like his crew on what he's trying to do and then partway through the book it splinters again and so you've got Nikolai who's off doing this one thing and then you've got another group that's at the capital trying to do this other thing and then you also have Nina that's where we're going yes <laughs> um so 
And even within those, it's not always told specifically from like Nina's point of view, if you're in Nina's crew. And so I found that really interesting because it kept the story fresh, even though it was kind of slow moving and densely written. It really gave like breathed life into the story. So again, I, I personally found it super engrossing. Now for characterization, it's kind of interesting because there is very, very little character development for Nina and for Nikolai. They were both pretty major characters. I mean, secondary characters, sure, but still major characters in other books. And I guess Lee Bardugo kind of felt like they didn't really need much more explaining, which is fine. I, I don't disagree with that. Now you do have Zoya, who is now Nikolai's like right hand main general person running his armies and stuff and she was in other books as a very far down secondary character i mean she definitely had some scenes where she was a major character but they were kind of brief and she really gets some good development character development in this book you learn her backstory and what like how they that shapes her motivations and stuff so there is character development for other characters just not so much for Nikolai and for um Nina which like I said I feel like was probably a good move because it would have just been redundant for Nikolai and for Nina so this book also introduces completely new characters we have several characters who were either just mentioned very very briefly in the other books or are absolutely new to this book um one of the main secondary characters, I guess, if I'm going to like create a new term here, uh, is from the village in Fjorda where Nina and her crew kind of set up camp. And so she's never been mentioned anywhere. And she kind of gets pulled into the shenanigans. Shenanigans. She's broke again. <laughs> the the shenanigans. It's not a word. <laughs> And so we don't, I mean, there's some character development about her, but I think that they are kind of saving that for future books because she kind of gets roped in. And now for the storyline, this is very much a plot centric book, which is kind of weird because plot centric books usually move much faster than this, but the plot is so like interwoven and there's so many layers that it takes a while to get going however again i personally i don't want to make that sound like a negative because i personally really enjoyed it there was a lot of detail there was a lot of intrigue there was it was um detailed in a way that made it just feel really rich and alive and i even though not a whole lot happens in this book because this is definitely a setup for the next book I still was like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? Oh, no. And so I was on the edge of my seat most of the time, which sounds weird because, like I said, not a whole lot actually happens in the book. Uh, yeah, this is such a weird book. It's so hard to describe. It's just go read it. Just go read it. <laughs> Honestly, it sounds awful. The now nobody should be surprised by the frame and the tone of this, because again, it's set in the Grisha universe, which we've had five other books set there. I've done videos on all of them. Um, and again, this keeps with the tone. It's still set in part of it's set in Ravka, which is basically like a mystical Russia of, of time long gone. And then the other half is set in Fjorda, which from the description kind of sounds like Scandinavia. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say that I don't know enough about the Scandinavian culture to be like, oh, I see the parallels. Not that I see, know anything about Russian culture either. So I don't know if the actual culture is based on anything at all, but like the description of the land and like the sound of like Fjorda kind of sounds like fjords, which is all over and Scandinavia. Anyway, so 
it's you still get this like lush detailed background with these very well drawn lands and you have these characters who all have tragic backstories filled with losses and love and love loss of love and um so you have you know the whole feel of the book is like bittersweet and suspenseful and foreboding and you know just like everything all of her other books like the world is about to end basically and we have to figure it out so it's bleak and do they figure it out nothing happened not yet not yet so i i really liked this book personally but this is definitely not a book for everyone like if you need a bunch of action or you need a wrapped up end then maybe if you need a wrap up like a what's the word i'm looking for like a resolution a resolution thank you if you need a resolution maybe wait till the second one's out and you can read both of them together because Lee Bardugo is good at doing resolved endings. She's not an open-ended kind of writer, but <laughs> this book has no ending. It just stops <laughs> um, because it's just a setup for the second book. So that's King of Scars by Lee Bardugo. Uh, I don't know how else to describe it other than it's kind of a dichotomy where a lot happens and yet nothing happens. And I don't know how else to describe it, but I really enjoyed it personally. And if you liked the other books in this series, then, or in the world, you'll probably enjoy this one because it is very quintessentially like Lee Bardugo. But definitely don't start with this one because there is no character development for the main characters because they've been introduced previously. Not to mention the fact that the situation that they are in, like as a country, was kind of created by what has happened in the, all of the previous books. So this one, even though it's the first of a duology, is really, they, I mean, like, if you go to Goodreads, it's listed both as, like, Grisha verse number six and Nikolai duology number one. So it definitely needs to be read after the other ones, because it is not, if you try to read this on its own, you're going to be like, who are these? What? I don't understand. Like, it is definitely written with the assumption you've read the other books. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And until next time, happy reading. When I read this, my dog decided right now was the time he needed to have lunch. I'm completely spacing on her name. Hold on. Hold. I'm glad we have the dog look slurping. Hey mom, I got my squeaky ball. Totally won't make a bunch of noise. <laughs> right? Not even a little bit at the beginning. <clears throat>